Jason from GR Rideshare Adventures. We have a different kind of podcast this week. We interviewed a couple of the team members from Experience GR. They are a travel bureau for the uh, for Kent County in our area in Michigan. And they offer a CTA program, which is a Certified Tourism Ambassador. Well, how can that help that help drivers um, by being a CTA? Well, that's what the interview will explain. But basically, it is a kind of a tourist program, and you go through a class and become an ambassador, and you're able to convey, you know, really cool things about the city, and and hopefully that turns into better tips for you. Um, so we're going to partner with them. Um, Jesper, Ben, and Nick and I are going to take the class. And uh, and then after that point, we're going to push it out to you guys and try to get something set up where a bunch of us can take the class in one big group uh, at one time and become ambassadors for the city. So listen to the interview. If you have any questions, please email me and I will forward them to either Dave or Lisa to try to get those answered. And obviously, we'll have more of an understanding when we take the class. So, enjoy. Welcome, guys, to the GR Rideshare Podcast. My name is Jason, and I'm here with Nick. Hello. And Dave. Hey there. And Lisa. Hi. And those voices are from Experience GR. Um, Nick gave Dave a ride at some point, and... uh, they connected and shared business cards, and so we finally put something together. And uh, we're just going to be here talking about um, what Experience GR is and and how it can be beneficial to rideshare drivers. So, um, so what is Experience GR? Yeah, so Experience Grand Rapids is the Convention and Visitors Bureau for Grand Rapids and Kent County. Okay otherwise known as the destination marketing organization for the area. And so what we do is promote visitation to Grand Rapids. Okay. So is, is it frowned, up, frowned upon to say experience GR? Nope. That's, okay. That's the, I that's, said that and then you were like, experience Grand Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> experience GR is the lingo. Okay. Okay. Um, why was it started and uh, and who started it? Yeah, so Experience Grand Rapids has been around for um, over 70 years, and it is it was originally started, again, to drive visitation. It was originally the Kent County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. It's kind of a mouthful, so we're doing business as DBA, Experience GR, um, and we were started really to represent the destination with long-term goals around the community and how we can grow our community through kind of a travel and tourism strategy. So for visitors, DMOs or destination marketing organizations are a really key part of the city. We kind of act as a broker or an official kind of launch point for um, conventions, for leisure visitors, for even for residents. Um, you know, and we encourage business travelers and visitors and locals alike to engage with our historic and cultural and recreational sites and activities. Well, that was quite the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, uh, what is your role in the company? I forgot to uh, ask you that. So uh, this is Dave. I'm working on the sales team. So okay. we work with groups. I work particularly with smaller groups, uh, weddings, reunions, birthdays, group tour and travel, corporate outings, things like that. Basically anyone that needs about 50 hotel rooms at a time or less. Okay. And then we have a whole bunch of coworkers on the sales team that are working with national groups that are booking things like the National Sheriff's Association, which is, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be booking 4,800 room nights. Uh, over the course, you know, in, in a couple of years when they come in. So 4,800 versus, you know, 50 at a time. So it's slightly different. And then Lisa works on the marketing team. So there's two different areas in Experience Grand Rapids. There's a marketing team that markets to the leisure traveler and the sales team markets to those having conventions okay. to get them to come to Grand Rapids. And we basically get paid for heads and beds because <laughs> we're funded. We're a not-for-profit. And so we're funded by assessments to hotels based on number of rooms okay, and also a percentage of the sales tax and along with some funds from the county. Okay. So what I do, I'm visitor services manager and the airport hires us to manage the airport information area. So the people with the green jackets are all experienced Grand Rapids people. Okay. And the other function is I run the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program, which is a national program that's been customized for Grand Rapids, going over the history, attractions, and customer service. Okay. Thanks for answering the sales part, because I was going to ask, is that how you guys make money for the nonprofit, right? I mean... Yeah. Um. So the 
the technical part of it really as far as as riders and as um, drivers are concerned we're free we're here as a, a resource for the community right but ultimately the way we're funded is from hotel taxes so hotel room night taxes and airbnb taxes okay so the the long version is slightly more complicated. Happy to get into it if you No, know. no, you can give us the short version. <laughs> the short version <laughs> is for every $100 you spend at the Amway Grand, you're going to spend 6% on a Michigan sales tax, 15% on a Kent County lodging excise tax, and 4% on a bed tax. So that totals in 15%. So anytime you spend any amount of money at any hotel in Grand Rapids, you're spending 15% more on your total bill and you'll see that when you yeah that it. sucks and <laughs> when you see that you're like oh it's only a hundred dollars a night wait 140 hey, hey, yeah. but, but here's the rub okay so um tourism represents about 1.16 billion dollars in revenue to kent county yeah wow so all of us 1.3 million people in kent county um, would have to pay over twelve hundred dollars more in taxes because it offsets the cost oh, for our infrastructure. Interesting. Yeah. So five dollars of that fifteen comes to fund our organization specifically. Oh, that's four dollars goes to fund the DeVos Place Convention Center and to repay the loan that the city and the county gave us. The county uh, and the other six percent again goes to Michigan sales tax. Okay. Interesting learning something. <laughs> yeah, right? So that's why we really want to make sure that the first impression that they get from the Lyft and Uber drivers yes. is a positive one. And we want to do anything possible to make sure that that happens. Okay, good. Um, I think we kind of talk what the purpose of uh, Experience GR is. How many employees work for Experience GR? So right now we have, oh, I want to say, what do you think, Lisa? I think it's 26. 26, and we have about Whoa. 15 to 18 part-time Okay, and so when the person at the airport gets paid an, a, a wage? They're all part-time at the airport. Okay, part-time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know if they were volunteers or anything Right, and like it's that. a well-sought-after job. There's a lot of people that want to do that. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a whole bunch of people just waiting. On a wait list? They love it. <laughs> oh. All you do is make people happy all day. You answer yeah. questions and guide them to where they need to go. Yeah, that's cool. And we also have between three and five rotating college interns as well. Okay, neat. Um, I have to say, I was... Looking at your site and the pictures are absolutely amazing. I mean, do you have an, uh, a photographer on staff or do you guys buy those from somebody? We work with several photographers in town. Okay. Uh, all very well known. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I was just wondering because they're amazing. Yeah. They're very, it's a nice website. Well, we got to put our first, best foot forward. When yeah. It comes to that, right? Especially on the web. Right. Because it's pictures that lure people. Yes. Get, right? I noticed that right away. Obviously, being in like this kind of thing, I'm like, man, those are good pictures. <laughs> Well, and, and you're doing a perfect example of it here at this podcast, and that is, it is the broader goal of creating content, right? Content yeah. is king. Yes. And we do uh, commission quite a bit of content, but we also have quite a bit organically that residents and visitors alike will kind of populate into our site. So when you're on social media, you can follow Experience Grand Rapids uh, on any social media platform. But one of the good ways we have other content is we'll actually populate it from people that are sharing. Well, you know, we'll ask permission to use it, but oftentimes, oh, yeah. So oftentimes, you know, someone takes a cool drone photo of downtown, you know, Reddit, um, Instagram, Pinterest. I mean, we have quite a few other sites where we're we're pulling information from, but most of the stuff you see, especially in printed and collateral materials, is commissioned work. Okay, that's very nice. Um, what are like the boundaries for events for Experience GR? So, it, would there be something that you would promote in Newego, or well, probably not, because it's, it's got to be in the county, it's right? Strictly county. Yeah, that makes sense. That was kind of a right. dumb question. With that um, said, though, there are other destination drivers such as Holland's Tulip Time or okay, yeah. Grand Haven's Coast Guard Fest or other things that, you know, we're aware of that. And we want to make sure that those events are successful too. So You just don't really push them? We don't necessarily push them, but I would say in my market, with the specialty markets, you know, a solid 30, 40% of my clients in some way are involved with Tulip Time. Okay. So wow. it, we do touch a lot of that. Okay. Um, what are the like top three popular events in Grand Rapids that you guys see the most traffic from art price <laughs> well yeah art price well, laugh fest laugh fest yeah yeah i uh i am actually a volunteer for laugh fest i work on the transportation team i've done that for the last two years and awesome awesome yeah. organization yeah, like the grand rapids jazz fest also brought in a lot of people really year. oh yeah there's wow. quite a few cultural festivals mm-hmm. you know the polish festival hispanic festival asian festival those 
do a really good job of driving visitation, especially among locals um, during the summer months. Okay. You know, we measure a lot of our, our kind of goals by um, how many visitors come, how, what the hotel, we have kind of a few metrics, the, the hotel room revenue, uh, revenue per available room, which is really given to you by the average daily rate and the occupancy percentage, right? So we have kind of these occupancy goals, but at the end of the day, what, what the events are, is a really robust reason to visit. And so sometimes the events like maybe the Jazz Fest, which are particularly focused on locals, um, are still wonderful destination improvements and things that we very much want to be promoting. Okay. Is there some sort of like survey that the hotel fills out so you kind of get some stats from that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all the all the 74 hotels in Kent County report back to us what their occupancy numbers are. Oh, wow. What they're, wow. Yeah. So we, I mean, because we serve them. Our, our board of directors is made up of 25 people. 13 of them are general managers of hotels. Oh, wow. 12 of them are people like the mayor and county commissioners and sure. the you know, president of the airport and things like that. And everybody, uh, they, we do a hotel survey every year and it cro- it goes over a cross section of different things. Um, you know, you know, how are we doing, you know, in a lot of v- different areas, they ask about the CTA program. So we get a lot of feedback that we use yeah. to um, develop the next year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Nick, do you want to talk about the ambassador section there? Oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, first question is, what is an, an ambassador for the city? Anybody who interfaces with a guest is considered an ambassador. But the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program actually is this certif- certification where you have CTA behind your name, where you really spent four hours with us and you've gone through the history and attractions, customer service. And um, so we rolled this out about the same time as the safety ambassador. So there's a little bit of a confusion. So um, downtown Grand Rapids Inc. has the teal colored shirts, blue pants, people who go around the city. Oh, yeah. yeah I've seen them. Yeah. They're all CTAs. They've all been through my training. But they're there to take people on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights until 3 o'clock in the morning safely oh, wow. <laughs> to their cars. They hold your dog while you get a cup of coffee. They'll walk you across the street with an umbrella. And they also monitor those people that are panhandling and try to find out, well, why are you panhandling? And let's direct you to some services here in Grand Rapids that could be beneficial to you. So they, they really help with that a lot. Wow. But there are typically those people that are just parking their gold Cadillac and panhandling. So oh, yeah. they yeah. try to sort that out, <laughs> and they try to make it easier for our visitors uh, by goal posting on either side of the person that's panhandling and saying, hey, you know, there's a lot of organizations you can give to in this town. Don't feel intimidated by the guy. Don't give him money. Just, you know. Oh, they stand out by them? Yeah. Well, they stand on either side of them. It's called goal posting. Oh, I never. That's and wow. so for <laughs> oncoming people, they don't do it all the time. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen it. So. Yeah. Well, you, well I drive from you like. Don't see it. <laughs> yeah, I drive from 9P to 3A. So I'm, I'm sure they're not out there doing oh, it then. So yeah. um, interesting. All right. Well, what may oh, will the program help someone who is extremely familiar with Grand Rapids? Oh yeah, I've had people here that have lived there all, all their life, and the history that we've got is probably richer than any CTA program in the country. There's probably about twenty eight to thirty CTA programs across the country. But the thing I will say about our program is, we have the fastest growing program in the country, and I've trained over thirty seven hundred people since August of two thousand thirteen. Oh, wow. Without any advertising, it's just people talking to people because people are really excited about Grand Rapids and everything that's going on here, and they want to be educated on how to properly convey that information to the people that are visiting. And it, I always cringe at Art Price because I always wonder, okay, <laughs> are people going to get the right answers? You know, so oh. take take I don't know out of your vocabulary because you got these little handhelds that have all the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um it's our prize is interesting. I've never actually gone down there. Isn't that terrible to say? My wife and kids have, but um, it's I, I'm I'm kind of bummed that they took it away, or they're going to do it every other year. Um, it seems, man, those businesses probably bank on that that revenue and and the hotels and everything too uh, yeah. for that, especially yeah, with have... the two new hotels coming. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, okay. A lot to say about that. <laughs> oh, did I touch the subject there? <laughs> but well, my husband and I have a couple of restaurants, and yeah, they they really benefit. Great. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. What yeah, because it's a lot of foot traffic. It's so they're like, oh, that looks like a great restaurant. Let's pop in there. So the ho- hotels and the restaurants are those that benefit from like a laugh fest or an art prize. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So uh, to add on on that point, um, to the two hotels in development, <laughs> there are twenty two hotels in development in King County right now. Oh wow! Um, there's <laughs> Whoa. just downtown. There's a Staybridge Suites, an Embassy Suites, a Hyatt Place, an AC Marriott, a Residence Inn Marriott. 
and a Hilton Canopy just downtown. Not to mention the suburban hotels up in Walker and in Kentwood and in Granville and et cetera, et cetera. Um, as far as art price, they're actually changing to Project One on in 2019 and Project Two 2021 and Project Three 2023, et cetera. And they're anticipating the same amount of visitors. Hmm. They're just hoping to space them out between the first month of or the first week, excuse me, of September through the last week of October. They also are focusing um, on awarding that money that they had set aside. They gave away about two hundred thousand dollars just in grants before the actual event, and then they award five thousand five hundred thousand dollars in prizes. They have about seven hundred thousand dollars on the line every year, and actually going to focus a lot of that money on an artist that will uh, have international renown and hope to draw a different crowd to Art Prize again in twenty twenty. Um, and the last thing I'll say about it is that. Um, with the invent of project one, they still have 300 sponsors and they still have 300 sponsors that are independently funding art prize. Art prize is completely independent of other major donors, the way it started. And those 300 sponsors who have multi-year contracts would not agree to something that would have less visitation. So you yeah, gotta, that's true. You got to believe that they're going to bring it in a different way. When that team originally came up with art prize <laughs> 10 years ago, Nobody knew what they were doing, and we kind of put faith in them as a community. Right. And we're going to do it again, and it's going to be successful. Well, it's, it's worked so far, so you have no reason to not. So just understand what they're going to be doing. So the money that they use for prize money, they're going to actually use it to actually get these artists to come here. Okay. And, and I don't know if you remember, you know, over 10 years ago, there was an artist, Thomas something. He had on um, these copper figures that were whimsical. Um, Angry Mama is still at the Frederick Meyer Gardens across from the children's area. Okay. And the thing was to make sure you saw all of his art, of, art his um, piece of art all over town. So it was like a mission. Mm. Uh, right. And so that was kind of a precursor to Art Prize. So, you know, you envision bigger projects, higher caliber, larger or over all over town. And, and okay. I think we're going to be really amazed at what we're probably going to see. So I don't think it's a a downside well thank you for explaining that because you know we only you only read the news right and you're just like oh this is terrible our prize has been great why are you taking away do you hate money like (laughs) yeah well the truth of it is um they didn't i don't think they'd wanted to pull the rug out of our prize 10 um which is currently happening true the other component of it is some of the things are still unknown and a lot of these announcements instead of being announced in june where they did for this year where who the artists are going to be and where they're going to be and things like that. They're going to have a lot of this information out by January of 2019. So look for first quarter announcements and you'll really have a good feeling for it well in advance. Okay. Well, that's good to know that there's still tons of sponsors and it's still going to be a big thing because the way you read it, it's like, Oh, great. This was great. Why aren't we doing it? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we've obviously learned you can't believe everything you read, but it's still, I was just like, Oh, you're, I, I agree with you on that, that it did seem to be, um, it was communicated in an ambiguous fashion, and yeah. I think there was a lot of confusion. Um, yeah. So we actually, as a team, sat down with the Art Prize team and, and grilled them, which is why I have information All those that answers. might not be as, as obvious. How many times them. have you said that to people, like what you just explained to me? Like, no, Too it's, many. Yeah, you you <laughs> like spit it out and like, wait, I got to talk about this Art Prize. Well, a lot of my clients come in for Art Prize, and okay. so I had, to, I had to go back to a lot of my clients that I was selling Art Prize 2019 to, yeah. go back and say, hey, we're not going to do it. We're going to do this other thing. <laughs> Yeah. Let me tell you about the other thing. Right. It's going to be just as good, I promise. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how much does it cost to be an ambassador? $35. And that basically covers the cost of the binder, your pen, certificates. It's just covering the cost. That's all we wanted to do. And so you go through the program, and after you've been a CTA for a year, we actually give you this booklet that is uh, full of eight different attractions. And the value on it is probably, you know, four to five hundred dollars for you and a guest to go to all these attractions, oh, so, wow. including Frederick Meyer Gardens and the Japanese gardens. Because the idea is we want the CTAs to go and visit these places and experience it. And, experience <laughs> it. and every one of those attractions count for ten points towards your renewal. Because every oh. year you have to renew because it is a certification. Right. And certified meeting planners, if they take the certified tourism ambassador program, it counts to their ongoing education. Okay. So it stands to reason we want to be knowledgeable about the town and continue to learn about it. So we give you the vehicle to do that free of charge for you and a guest. You know, questions are popping into my head as you're talking. What 
is required for a CTA, meaning do you have to like work a shift no. or do you have to, yeah, yeah, what are the, what do they have to do after they get the training? I guess. What? No, the, the only expectation I have is once a day, at least once a day, ask somebody, how may I help you? And uh-huh. if you can't find anybody who doesn't know where they're going, go in the skywalk because they always are, <laughs> there's always somebody there that needs. But if you go in Monroe Center, that seems to be a funnel where a lot of visitors go. But okay. so once a day, ask somebody, can I help you? Walk them to the destination okay. if possible. Yeah. If you have the time to do that, thank them for coming to Grand Rapids. Have them tell others what a great place we have here and have them come back and see us again soon. And that's kind of like the Kool Aid talk. Yeah. That we kind of, <laughs> because if everybody is saying that when visitors come, they recognize that, A, you know, you've made a choice to come here. Right. You're spending your hard earned money to come here and enjoy the city. Yeah. We want you to enjoy the city. We appreciate the fact that you've come. We are already are wanting you to come back and we want you to tell others of what you saw here because once you see Grand Rapids, you fall in love with it. Yeah. When I, we, Nick and I do a lot of airport runs and we pick up people and, and we talk about Grand Rapids and like, what is it about the city? And I'm like, oh man, this city is great. I'm like, you just opened a can of worms. Like, what do we got? 20 minutes? Because let me tell you. <laughs> and then I'll get repeat or people that have been here before. They're like, you know, I just love Grand Rapids. This is just a great city. I'm like, I oh, know. I'm telling Everyone you. Everyone always says it's very, very clean. Oh yeah. I'm from Detroit. That was the very first thing. The factories are clean. Yeah. Well, they even said... um how everyone's just will like smile at you while you're walking down the street. I'm like, yeah, that's right. just what you do. I mean, not everyone, of course, but you know, if someone catches your eye. I'm like, hey, what's up? Or at yeah. least eye contact and a, something. And a nod. Yeah. You know? Well, or the man a... nod. You know, you're like, what's up? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just look straight up. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I I feel like I'm kind of doing that already right. because I do love the city. Yeah. I mean, I would I don't like winter. Yeah. I will let you know that my wife and I's retirement plan. Is a couple months in Florida in the winter. So. Snowbird, <laughs> snowbird, yeah. yeah. But I do love this city. It's it's amazing, and and I'm 42, so I grew up in the 90s. You didn't come downtown when I was in high school. No, you just I, like I was, division and wealthy. Like, yeah, I moved here in the early 80s, and I was told don't go downtown. Yeah, you know, and it was it was one of these things. But you have to understand. So, um, our our first black mayor. Um, he actually had such vision. Okay. And, um, it was in the mid to late eighties, um, Lyman parks. And, and so they were building the DeVos performance hall. And I go over this in the class, but this is the story because people ask who are DeVos and Van Andel and how come they're in all the buildings. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, right away, they're from strangers. If they're <laughs> yeah. pronouncing it, right? So, um, anyway, so he was working, uh, you know, as mayor and he wanted to, he had a big vision and he had this hotel that was dilapidated. He needed to improve it, the pantlin. And so when Mr. DeVos was giving this money, his wife actually took Lemon Parks out and said, Hey, you know, how are you going to recognize my husband? And Lyman thought about it for a while and he goes, you know, I've got this hotel, you know, what do I do? So he decided to call it DeVos Performance Hall. Then he Mm. took out Mr. DeVos for dinner and he said, how would you like to get in the hotel business? Little did he know that Bill Marriott and... (laughs) <laughs> Mr. DeVos knew each other. <laughs> oh. And, and so Mr. DeVos knew he could glean that. And that, my friend, is why we have a JW Marriott because of that relationship. Wow. Yeah. But at that time, what happened was all these very successful entrepreneurs got together and they formed an organization called Grand Action and they systemically built the city. Okay. And because we have this collaborative, innovative, pioneering spirit. That is what separates and differentiates us from the, the different areas. And, okay. And because of their leadership, we're number one and our number two in altruistic give, giving in the country, second okay. only to Utah. Wow. All right. you know, so when you move here, you know you have to give back. It's just a norm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think it kind of started in maybe, if correct me if I'm wrong, but like when the arena came in, that was when it started. It felt like well, it started that's there. When Grand Action decided to Because that was like, what, area. 1996? Yeah. Somewhere on there? Right there. And then they, the only reason they built the arena first is because the land was more accessible. They really wanted to build the DeVos Convention Center. Oh. So Grand Action did that, that, and they also did the downtown market. Oh. Okay. And the Civic Theater. Oh, love and the Civic. And they recently disbanded. But individually, they participated in a lot of buildings that you don't see their name on. Yeah. You know? So they've really done a lot to as the catalyst to keep things going. Right. And in March of this year, um, Grand Action disbanded. Okay. Because the, the momentum is going, and hopefully right. we'll keep that momentum. Yeah. So through those low times that we had in the mid, you know, the, the 2008, yep. 2009, you know, they were working on Medical Mile. Yeah. And we still had things going on. Yeah. That was a rough couple of years. The economy is great now. It's booming. You drive through the S-curve and you count like mm, <laughs> 10 cranes up moving around. Right. So that's pretty exciting. 
It's the state bird of Grand Rapids. It's yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm so tired of construction. That feels like that's the state bird is the uh, <laughs> the, the barrels. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, those are our seasons, winter and construction. Yeah, I'm I'm actually ready for winter to get rid of the barrels. It's been crazy. So <laughs> Um, how many ambassadors are there? Cur- oh, I'm sorry, Nick. Oh, how many ambassadors are there currently? We're crossing over 3,800. Oh. I think I'm at 3,794. And I, I have third-party agreements with the universities that have hospitality programs. I'm in the middle of training all of them. So by the end of the year, we should have 3,900. But what is more impressive, I think, is that it's not the typical suspects. So there's over 650 businesses who have people who are CTAs. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, I guess it depends what your definition of ambassadors are. There's this lovely certification program, but we also have this Brusader program where oh, people yeah. can get <laughs> a passport. And if you go to any brewery, there's 41 now that'll be in uh, Kent County. And if you go to any brewery in Kent County, uh, they'll have passports, these paper passports or the digital app, which uh, you can download. It's called the Beer City Brusader app. And if you get eight visits, you become a Brusader. Nice. And since October of 2015, we've had 12,000 Brusaders. 12,000 wow. times That's eight. That's a lot of beer. <laughs> times eight brewery visits. And, and about a third of them are from Kent County, and about a third of them are from Michigan outside of Kent County, and about a third of them are actually from outside of the state. Okay. So it's wow. really cool that we've had 4,000 Brusaders that have gone to at least eight different breweries from outside of Michigan. Um, and that's only in the last two and a half, three years. So we're wow. really excited to have, um, you know, the, first of all, the CTA program is a very formalized version, I think, especially for locals. And I think for Lyft and Uber drivers, um, they should get personally certified. But you can kind of talk to your airport rideys, uh, <laughs> or riders, I should say, about how they can be an ambassador too. And they can kind of, you know, learn to love the community and, and experience what Beer City has to offer. Interesting. Right. So there's something else too that's really interesting that would benefit the Uber and Lyft drivers. We have a culture pass. It's at culturepassgr.com. It's for those people that are staying in the area for three days. For $24, it reduces the rates of the attractions. And we're working on oh, wow. getting Meyer Gardens to be a part of that. Currently, they're not. But um, these are all things that... In sharing those things, your tips can go up. I mean, I mentioned earlier that we have a couple of restaurants. Well, we've got these little cards that say, look for the pin that we put inside of the guest checks. And whenever people get that and they look at it and they look to see if the person's wearing a pin, we've had a server get $100 on top of what she would have gotten. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. And another one got 50 just because they're giving information about the area. Yeah. I kind of got into this because I had a cab driver in San Francisco. Uh-oh. He was a wonder. No, no. Oh, like, this is a good, this this is a good, is a good story. story. Cab drivers are bad, really Lisa. Good, no, I, I, no, this is way before Uber, way before Lyft. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, <laughs> keep that in mind. But <laughs> but this cab driver was so enthusiastic. He said, hey, where are you from? How long are you in town? You know, what do you like to do? You know, what can I direct you to? He was just so wonderful that it was like, a breath of fresh air because, you know, yeah, prior to that, cab drivers. <laughs> had a, yeah. you know, but he was really excited about the fact that we chose to come to San Francisco. That's and such a huge thing when that happens. It, it makes you feel good. You're like, wow, does. this guy is like super into the city and he's smart. And it instead does. of like, where you got to go? A good first impression of the city. Yeah. 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 So I've got these stickers that I make for the bus bus shuttles, the, or the shuttles that go from the airport to the area hotels. Okay. That says, welcome to Grand Rapids. Look for the pin. Because when people look for the pin, you know, they know that that's a certified tourism ambassador. And so um, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers can put this in their car once they've gone through the program. And once they see the pin, they know that they're somebody that's, you know, and they can put the pin right on the, you know. Uh, The visor. Visor, right? Yeah. And that's kind of a nice handoff too, right? Like you can say, okay, you know, they get out, they're, they're going to talk to the bellman or whatever, but they can look for that pin as they're walking to breakfast the next morning or things like that. Yeah. Um, and to, to reiterate Lisa's point. So I, I'm from Ann Arbor. I moved to Michigan or excuse me. I moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan in 2011. And I've been working in hotels since and in hospitality and now for the tourism bureau. But my first start, I didn't even own a car when I came to Grand Rapids and I was actually a student in Allendale and I was taking the the bus oh. from Allendale to Grand Rapids and I was working at the courtyard Marriott. And using the Experience Grand Rapids Visitor's Guide was how I got better tips because I could take out the walking map in the back of it and I could say, okay, you know, you know, they, people would come in for a coffee or a beer and then they'd be going off to dinner. And, you know, sometimes some people might be upset that, oh, you know, they're not going to be taking that 
uh, you know, m- meal and spending it in the hotel. First of all, who wants to do that? But right. <laughs> the, the better, the, what I realized is, you know, when someone's sitting there having a beer and saying, where should I go for dinner? Well, what are you in the mood for? Uh, seafood. Okay. Well, there's a couple options, you know, a price point, blah, blah, blah. but like to be able to give them real, uh, identifiable recommendations, um, actually increased my tips, even though they were, they were going and spending their money somewhere else because they appreciated that we took the time. Yeah. And as a, as a, you know, business traveler now, I'm traveling about a hundred days a year for work. I actually met Nick coming home from a business trip, but every time I go to a new city, it's, it's oftentimes the first time I've been there. Yeah. And I, I this sticks in my brain like glue when <laughs> I landed in Daytona beach, there was a, a call to lift and the car that comes to pick me up, it was actually a F-150. Oh, wow. And it was like this guy who, who was probably 60 but he looked like he was 85 because he had like cigarettes. He had yeah, smoke or something. rough he, life. He comes in and he's he's got kind of like this Ted Nugent look to him. And he had just like uh, like a Hawaiian shirt on and like Jimmy Buffett seat covers. And it was just like, <laughs> you know, straw wicker cowboy hat. And he's like, welcome to Florida. And I'm like, this is exactly what I thought Daytona was going to be like. And, you know, and the whole time right into the hotel, I'm asking him 100 questions. And, he, and he's telling me about the auto show that was in house and everything. But like, I gave him a great tip because he was just like unabashedly proud of the community that he lived in. Yeah. And, um, that was kind of a light bulb moment for me. And so that's actually why I talked to Nick originally, because truly you can change the bottom line of how much money you're making as a Lyft driver or right. an Uber driver or rideshare driver by being an ambassador for the community. Yeah. And so I actually, when I was at the courtyard Marriott, spent the money on my own as a broke server without a car on the CTA class Mm -hmm. and went through it on my own without my coworkers or my boss even paying for it or giving me the time off work. I found a time to go on my own because I valued the certification and I wanted to, to have that experience because guess what? The ROI is there. You actually make that money back in tips. Dave's actually taken the course twice. Yeah. (laughs) Overachiever. (laughs) Well, now I work for the bureau. So let's talk. Yeah, He did an internship uh, at a PR firm and, and I took that PR firm through the CTA program. He was a part of that as well. Oh, nice. Nice. So, I mean, we've kind of talked about some of these targeting the ride share community. Why do you want to do that? I mean, I know the obvious oh, why, yeah. but how do you think that um, we will be a good fit? We've kind of talked about that. Because um, you're right there. You're the first impression <laughs> right. and you are totally all about enhancing that visitor's experience. And I don't know about you, but when I go someplace, I like those little stories. Like, I'll give you a freebie. Okay, this is in the CTA class. But <laughs> why is the blue bridge blue? Not a clue. City ran out of money. That's the primer color. And really? Then, yeah. Oh, and wow. when Grand Rapids and when Grand Rapids downtown Grand Rapids inks came to the people and they said, "Okay, what color do you want the Blue Bridge to be?" And they were like, "Well, blue. You know, Grand Valley's right there." <laughs> right, so right, right. They painted it a Pantone color that was the Grand Valley State University blue. Okay. But now they put on the colored lights, like for the yeah, yeah. school and Susan G. Komen, it's pink and, and whatnot. But yeah, that's the little fact that you can throw at these people and they're like, whoa, that's kind of cool. I that think. is interesting. Right? Um, when you take that course, are you able to look at those facts? It, do you, you, it comes in the binder that you have or not? Oh, you got to remember them all? No, they come out of my head. Well, no, no, you, you mean, but how do we hey, remember them? Well, then you, re- you got to write, write them down. But you see, the thing is, I give you this binder. And if you're going to go through, you have this binder ahead of time. Yeah. It's like 187 pages. If you're going to go through the class, I got to give you something that's not in the book, right? Yeah. True. Okay. So it's all these little stories like, all right. why, why are the streets crooked? Why are, where are the Grand Rapids? I'll have to write them down because I, <laughs> I need to say them a bunch of times before I remember them because that's a really cool thing. I would have never known yeah. that. So there's a lot of things you never know. Before. Right. <laughs> you know, one of the other cool things that I love telling people about is the Grand River restoration and what's happening there. I and, actually just learned about that at a golf outing. They were there. Right on. The, me, you mean the rapids? More. Yeah. Okay. I don't know anything about it. So like, there's like some cool history there and, and I could talk about it for an hour, but I'll, I'll give you the, the, the quick version. Um, you know, the, the Grand River actually used to be a meeting point for the Ottawa, the Potawatomi and the Chippewa tribes. And it was actually, uh, the meeting place every 12 moons, they would come and have kind of trade talks and they would, they would talk about like the treaties and things and the original French Canadian settlers. Again, Michigan was all woods and people got around by canoe. Yeah. And so originally, you know, the fur trappers and things. And, yeah. And you had to physically get out of your canoe and walk it for a mile because the rapids from Ann Street to Wealthy Street drop about 18 feet. Oh, to give wow. You perspective, naturally. Like that's like Rocky Mountain level rapids. Yeah. Because 
from Wealthy Street to Lake Michigan, the next 36 miles of Winding River, the river drops four feet. Oh, so wow. <laughs> that gives you perspective. It drops 18 feet in like a mile of downtown. There used to be right. from the rapids. Sixth Street Bridge down to where Charlie's Crab is. Yeah, and the and the original uh, Indian tribes could hear it from a mile away. It was so loud, <laughs> and, and so that's a how they knew where to meet. Very spiritual thing to the Indians to bring back that rushing of the water and the rapids okay. because it was a very spiritual um, essence to their community. It's the lifeblood of their community. Wow. Yeah, and so you know the Grand Rapids Whitewater and GR Forward Downtown Grand Rapids Inc. The city. You know, there's so much funding. It's a it's an international project because the waterways touch Canada. Mm. It's a federal project. And, it, and it's, it's a very state intricate project. because there's these muscles that purify like fifteen to sixteen thousand gallons of water each. Oh wow! So they soft muscles. Endangered. They have to be you know harvested and kept at the Grand Rapids Public Museum and kept well while they do the river and they have to make sure that the sea lamprey don't get through. Yeah. And so, you know, all of, all of this is going to be happening at once. I mean, there's going to be tiering of the river so that, oh, wow. so that the river can be absorbed and not flood onto the banks and it, and that leveling can be reused for seeding uh, throughout the year. But one level, one area of the river is going to be fast and the other side is going to be slow. Okay. What's really cool is that there's a place in the river where you're going to be able to do wakeboarding. Oh, which is really interesting. Again, wow. Colorado actually designed it for us. Wow. And it's going to be accessible. There's going to be a place where handicapped folks can get into a kayak launch. And there's going to be, you know, thing after thing after thing that are that are really cool pride points for the community. And the, the reason I bring it up is, again, as a Lyft driver, as an Uber driver, you're able to have pride in your community. You're able to talk about what's happening, the development that's sharing. After I worked at the Courtyard Marriott, I moved on to... Uh, the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel, and I worked at Cygnus 27, which is on the top floor of that yep. hotel. Cool restaurant. I was totally unqualified to work there when they came <laughs> <in>. me. <laughs> Still kind of am. And they, but the very reality of it was we had a 27 story view of the cranes in the sky, right? Yep. And I got better tips by saying that crane is working on that project. Mm. And this is going to be a new, new Holland brewery is going up over there, or this is going to be, you know, the new part of the grand Valley campus, or this is good. And this is why it's cool for the community. And this is why you should be excited about it too. And that was a very real financial, imp like the implications of being able to get better tips. When you're a better guest service ambassador, people have a better experience. The community grows and you make more money. Yeah. Right. So that guest that asks where are the rapids so you can tell them in 2025, the <laughs> rapids will be back. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So currently, you you guys know all these are going on behind the scenes. I mean, we hear bits and pieces of it, but I didn't know all that was happening. Like 2025 for sure. Like that's I mean, well, well, you know it's how a soft is. huh? <laughs> you know how construction is. Well, yeah, it's a soft 2025. Right, it could be 2030. Soft. No, nope. I don't think it'd be out that far. Oh, okay. So you'll start to see, there's already work going on right now. And so a lot of what I mentioned with the international, state, federal, and local, there's a lot of grant money coming in in a lot of different ways. It's it's funded publicly. It's funded privately. It's funded by um, local, state, and again, federal, international dollars. So a lot of that had to get lined up first. The next thing and the thing that's been really going on this year is there are 36 different pieces of property up and down the river on each side of the river. And whoever owns the property actually owns into the halfway through the river. Oh, really? And so wow. there's the river and the river's edge, and there's two different components to it. And then, you know, you have maybe 32 of the 36 pieces, but then you have to sue people with imminent domain or, or, or you have to go into negotiations or buy or do this or get access. And there's a lot of legal backstory before any of these federal dollars will be released or state dollars oh, will wow. be released. So there's a lot of that has been going on. And so that's why you hear about it, but it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Right. Um, and so that's why you start to see hotels like the Embassy Suites, which will be open in the first quarter of 2019 being built right on the river because guess what suburban ends knows that that ha that the grand river is happening you know okay. so it's coming. some people are already <laughs> bought in and it's going to be a process and to lisa's point you know 2024 2025 will be when it's done done but you're going to see, see people progress, you're gonna see people yeah. with booties pulling muscles out of their spring of 2019 okay so and and it'll keep going and and to learn more about that project go to grand rapids whitewater project or go to the gr forward plan with dgri and the gold one alliance to learn more but again things are moving forward it's a it's a long and complicated and arduous <laughs> process but it's a reason to be excited and there's a development and again to lisa's point answers about where are the rapids right you have a good story to tell yeah yeah so what can we offer for rideshare drivers i know we're 
trying to get well, well we haven't talked about it on our social media at all or anything but after this gets released we'll obviously push it but what are you guys offering for them um as far as class goes well we're going to be training i believe four of you free of charge so you know what's involved and right we'll speak to it a little bit more. yes um, but uh, we want to reduce the rate for them okay. because it's so important, like we do for Laugh Fest and Art Prize. It's so important for those people that are interfacing with guests. We know a lot of them are coming in yeah. to know. So um, we're, we're looking at reducing that significantly okay. uh, going forward. The details have yet to be hammered out because right. there's a lot to do whether or not we have a facility because facilities cost too. Right. So, yep. Yeah, I was going to mention to you, yeah, we looked at the schedule for all that and I'm like, it's during the day. Like we we work during the day so that like all our side jobs are at night. I'm like, right. oh man, this is going to be tough. But well, well, that's something that we can customize. For sure. You know, I've given the, gotten the flexibility to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but typically the classes run from 8 a.m. to 12 noon or noon to 5. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that in, in this case, maybe a condensed version of it without doing yeah. the breaks because breaks take time too and, and just plowing through it. You know, we could probably get it done yeah. in two and a half, three hours. Yeah, I have a driver in mind. You know, now the full time drivers are that's fine, right? Because that's what's great about Uber and Lyft. It's like you're you're your own boss, so they're like, yeah, we can do an eight to noon. That's no problem. Um, but I have someone in mind that man, she's gonna eat this up. Like she's all about customer service, and she's a full time driver, and she's great. So I can't wait to to push this out. So sure. We're also going to be working, hopefully, ideally conversations are ongoing with the Lyft and Uber offices of okay. brick and mortar. So you can go and, and pick up visitor guides or, or our trails. We have an ale trail, a food trail, a music trail, and other kind of printed materials. Most of this information is all available online. And yeah. we would kind of first encourage most riders to to go digitally. Again, the, the Beer Seder Passport app is, Beer Seder Passport app is digital. And there are other digital resources you can be recommending while you're sitting there in the car and they can be pulling up. And referring to later, but some people really like having that kind of paper visitor guide, yeah. or paper yeah. trail. There's or, dining and shopping guides too, with a map of downtown Grand Rapids, which people find very helpful. Okay, so we we might want to, you know, we're going to be working again going forward to empower drivers to have some of these materials in their vehicle if they choose to. Right, um, just as kind of a, a you know, if a conversation organically comes up, just to have a resource again, good chance you get good tips. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you guys want to add? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thanks for the opportunity. No, I mean, thank. Yeah, you know, this... we've been wanting to. I, I ride the the Uber and Lyft all the time, and I'm yeah. like, talk to the drivers, and nobody's really heard about the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program. I'm like, you know, here's my card, really. Yeah, it's something you should really investigate in because you know you're our front line, and you're very right? important to us. Yeah, and this whole program was designed to make sure that every visitor encounter in, ends up in a positive experience. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I'd absolutely like to, you know, echo the thanks for listening. But I, you know, again, um, you know, I'm, I'm a young guy. I'm 25. I've I've spent the last seven years of my life in Grand Rapids and West Michigan, and I moved here from Ann Arbor. And the momentum and the excitement is palpable. And for especially for locals, I think sometimes you can be kind of, um, you know, it, almost take it for granted. And, and yeah. growing up in Southeast Michigan and, and moving here and, and seeing ten grains in the sky is like gives me goosebumps kind of thing. So <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, I, I, I want to just leave you guys with a sense of not only like you can make better tips and give better customer service, right. but like there's a cool story to tell in Grand Rapids and we're excited that you guys are excited to share it. Yeah. It's funny you say that about the cranes. I, I get the same way. I feel like a nerd when I do. I'm like, man, this is so cool. Like, look at all the, I mean, not that I like all the construction. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> you drive all the time. It's just a constant like, hmm. Yeah, that movie theater going up has been a pain in our Yeah, head. it's been a pain. <laughs> oh, but I'll tell you what, there's going to be a, a Hilton Canopy when that's open. Yeah. And Canopy, fun fact, go Google this, guys. A Hilton <laughs> Canopy is a is a brand that Hilton has. There's only four in existence in the world right now. Reykjavik, Iceland, Washington, D.C., Dallas, Texas, Portland, Oregon. Really? We're getting one of the first Hilton Canopies in the world. And uh, JD Lokes and the folks at Studio C, uh, Studio C went to bat, and they worked with the city, and they worked at the right place, and they worked with the entire community to get that. Ooh. And there will be a lot more Hilton canopies coming into the country and into the world. You know, it's it's a big brand that Hilton's proud of, right. but they're also very selective about it. And so, you know, construction is always complicated. Yeah. But again, it's you know, the more you research into it, the more excitement that you can have. Be like, man, and guess what? 
fall 2019 that's going to be open and you're going to be taking a lot of people from the airport well, that, to that hotel <laughs> instant, that's the thing I, I appreciate you bringing that up because a lot of people like they complain about the construction like me but they don't know the story behind that and that's that was really cool to share well that's a mm-hmm. that's cool mm-hmm. like the ac marriott by the uh the 20 minute live it's going to be all herman miller furniture in the first Whoa. floor they just hired a general manager from miami um you know it's going to be this great you know 120 150 room hotel Again, you're going to be taking trips from the airport to that AC Marriott every day. Nice. So you'll be able to tell people, oh man, check out the lobby bar. It's going to be great. You know, what? but yeah. like again, as you know more, you're able to give a better experience and you're able to get better tips. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for joining uh, Thank us. You. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, once we get this edited and posted and all that good stuff, we'll, we'll get it rolling. Right on. So, thanks so right. much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks.